All right. So this is this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the message. Um, this is something I've been feeling in my heart for a while. Actually, I think each of us have probably dealt with this um, probably most of our lives. And so uh, I'm not here to share thoughts on what's been going on around the world. Um, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, and to shine some light on whose voice rather we're listening, believing, and worshiping is our king. And the title of my message, as you can see, is Who is the King of Your Heart? And I think it's important in the time that we're living in uh, as Christ followers that we're not trying to build our platform, but rather going back to build Jesus, our King's platform or kingdom. And He wanted to see peace, unity, healing, restoration, reconciliation. And all those things in our life, but it wasn't going to come the way that we imagined it. And I know a lot of us want that freedom, want that healing, want that peace. I think a lot of our world is crying out for that. They're seeing the weaknesses of our country, of this world, of America. We may experience a, a slight freedom, but it's not complete true freedom. And I think that's what each of us are desiring. And so and during this time, I want to... We must reflect and examine our lives to make sure we're listening, believing, and worshiping the only true King. And uh, whether we believe in Christ or not, uh, we will all believe in something and worship something. And my question to you, those that are here and those that may be listening, whether you believe or not, who is the King of your heart? And in Scripture, all the way in the beginning, Cain and Abel, the choice is simple. We build God's kingdom, or we build anything in opposition of his kingdom, if we're not careful. That's what Satan did. He built his kingdom. He didn't want God to lead him. So before we get started, let's go ahead and let's bow our heads and let's pray. Let's get invite God in. So God, we just thank you, uh, God, that your name is the name above all names. God, your name is holy. God, you are separate from all evil. There is no darkness inside you. And God, we, we came to not lift up any name, any other church name, but your kingdom in our lives, in our family's lives, and all those that may listen, God. I just pray, God, that you would speak to us, God. We pray that your kingdom would come, your will be done, mercy and grace would be released, God. Your mercy that draws us closer to your heart, to understanding who you are, God. That's the thing that draws us into understanding your love for us. And God, I just pray, God, that you would show us who you are, God. Thank you that your mercies are new every single morning. And you delight in showing mercy, not judgment, Father God. Would you show us that mercy today, God? Would you speak to whatever needs there are in our congregation, in this world, and, and, and all the needs of the people that may be listening, God, whether it's a physical, spiritual, emotional, mental, relational, God, whatever need there is, God, we thank you that we can bring that before you, God. We cast all those things before you, and we thank you that we can put those at your, your feet because you care about us. We can ask for those things. And God, right now, we just ask, Lord, that you would speak to us, God, that you'd meet us right where we're at, Father. God, we pray that you'd speak to us uh, during this time and during this word. God, help us not to believe anything else but your spirit, God. Forgive us for believing anything else other than your word and lifting up anything else other than what you uh, called us to do, God. We thank you, Jesus. We pray that you would speak to us during this time. We pray that you would help us not to go back to our old ways of living. Help us to extend the same love that you extend to us and help us to... Uh, to be saved by you, God. It's only by your power, by your love, by your grace, God, that sets us free. And so, God, would you speak to us and would you come and save us, God? In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn your Bibles to Genesis 4. We're going to Genesis 4 through 1 through 26. And so we're going to get the story of Cain and Abel. And before we go into that, while you're turning, I'm just going to go over some background. Okay? It's pretty simple to get there, too. Genesis is the first book of your Bible. Um, for the kids that may be watching, it's pretty easy to get there. Just turn a couple pages, so you get to Genesis 4, you'll see it. Um, prior to Cain and Abel, we see the fall of man and the need for and promise of salvation. And I think that's what we're seeing in America, too. I think you're just seeing the weaknesses of man. You're seeing the weaknesses in our government. And you're seeing that we can't experience true freedom that God desires to give to us. And so, so you see that. You see that at the beginning, and you're seeing it now. It's never left. In Adam and Eve's lives, we see themes that the human race is sinful, that we're all messed up, we all fall short. Sin spoils good creation, and God, and third, that God will overcome sin. There's our hope. That's the hope that each each believer looks to. At this point, though, in in the in the time, it's not clear how salvation or freedom will come. Amen. Aren't we asking the same question? 
How, how are we going to navigate through this COVID-19? How are we going to navigate through all this protesting? How, how are we supposed to respond? What are we supposed to do? How are we going to experience freedom and salvation? Is it going to come through our government? Is it going to come in America? Is it going to come through a man? No. So where does our true freedom come from? Freedom comes from comes in understanding to surrender and worship the only true king and to build his kingdom, not ours. God promised this in Eve's life after they had fallen, after they had messed up. Okay, it wasn't all negative, thank God. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I got trouble, but okay, there's some hope. He said this in Genesis 3, 15, I will put an enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring, and he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This was the first hope of God's plan to defeat evil and restore his relationship with people, to bring salvation and uh, freedom. This was also a prophecy of Christ being born by a woman to be, who would be bruised. Uh, he would be bruised by an unjust death. An unjust death on the cross. Yet he would rise from the dead and defeat sin and death to, to completely bruise uh, Satan. Sin and death in order to save the human race. And it's important, us, as Christ followers, the only thing that we can do with everything that's going wrong going around, is be there to listen to people, and we'll talk more about that, but to share, to point people, like, like, like our vision says, lead, love, and connect people to Jesus, because he's the one that understands what injustice feels like. He's the one that has literally walked that people we put on the cross, and he did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. And so he's the only one that can help understand each of us, what each of us are going through, and bring the healing. So when we see his love, and that's the only thing as Christ followers we can do, is point them back to his love. Adam and Eve couldn't be in the presence of God no longer or have a voice. I think a lot of us are seeing that with everything that's going on, everybody wants a voice. Everybody wants to say. That's how we are created. We are created to have a voice. Okay? But I, I don't think it's wrong to share your frustration. But there just needs to be some redirection. It's just like a, having a little kid, like a little boy, who's really destructive. When, when you're building a, a, a tower, he comes and just wrecks it, just destroys it. You don't spank the kid and tell him, no, don't do that. You redirect him. Give him some redirection. Here, this is how we do it. Okay, and the same thing is the same thing is with our world. They just need some redirection. And as a Christ follower, as a Christian, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Redirect them back to Christ. That hey, your voice isn't found in this world, it's found in your Savior and your personal relationship with God. That's right. Okay, I'll hurry up. Okay, I'm gonna get in trouble here because I'm not even in the message yet. Um, <laughs> Uh, it was stripped from them uh, because of the fall of man. And uh, we lost our voice. We lost our say. And that's what people are, are seeing. That's what we're beginning to notice. I think all of us, even me growing up, I wanted the voice. I wanted to say. I just wanted to be heard. I think all of us experience that to a certain degree. And because of the fall of man, the choice is simple now for man. There is really only two ways in two races. To follow God. To live for God or to live an ungodly life. Those are the two ways and two races. And we see that beginning all the way from Cain and Abel. One builds God's kingdom. One builds the enemy's kingdom. And we're going to see that. Okay? All right, so go ahead. Let's go ahead and jump into our scripture here. Now we're getting started. It's okay. <laughs> all right. All right, picking up in verse 1. Adam lay with his wife Eve. She became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of our Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought the fat portions from, the sun, from some of the first one of his flock. <clears throat> The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you don't do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. Its desires to have you. But you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother 
Abel, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's, brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crop for you. You'll be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence, and I will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. I'm going to stop right there, and we're going to break down some scripture here, and then we'll, we'll continue towards the end with the rest of the, the chapter here. But, okay, so in, in Cain's life, we see, okay, he's the firstborn, but he's, his vocation or his gifting was or calling was founded under the category of being a tiller of the ground. He took care of the plants, whereas Abel was a keeper of the sheep who took care of the animals, okay? And so in the story, we're going to find two kingdoms that emerge from this, okay? We're seeing it all the way from Adam and Eve, the consequences of Adam and Eve, but you're going to see two kingdoms emerge through the lives of these two, these two uh, boys here. Let me come in, okay? And so um, Cain took care of the plants, Abel took care of the animals. God provided, but it's, it's, it's important to understand that God provided two sons to perform in both important roles. One that provided foods and fruit from the plants, that, and one that provided hide and wool, clothing, and warmth from the animals. Um, these, but these, if you go down to sacrifices, and there's sacrifice here, both of them bring a sacrifice, and these sacrifices were the first sacrifices of the human race. And that's what would follow after, uh, throughout the um, Old Testament, you would see um, a pattern of that. But sacrifices were offered after the fall, and the presupposed the spiritual separation of man from God, and they were designed to satisfy the need of heart and for fellowship with God. But in this case right here, in this case, the offerings or sacrifices were expressive gratitude to God. To whom, to whom they owed all that they had. The offering wasn't so much about God's love for Cain and Abel. I think it's easy missed and interpreted that, oh, God didn't care about Cain. He loved Abel more. He accepted his offering. And how true is that today, man? When, when we bring something to the table or a gift or a talent of ours and someone doesn't accept that gift or it's not the idea that was first, how, how quick are we to be like, well, oh, you don't accept me. You don't care about me. You don't love me. And, that, and that's, that's not the case at all. And that's how Cain was feeling. But that, that wasn't the case. That this offering was an offering or sacrifice, an opportunity for Cain and Abel to show their love for God. It was an opportunity to show what they believed or who they worshipped as their king. You see in the scripture that Abel, he responds in faith. And Hebrews 4 talks about that. That he responds in faith and thankfulness. He brings the best of, of his flock. He brings the first and the extra portion. Cain merely brought his offering just to keep on good terms with God. Just to do what he asked. And so what we see happening here in the physical of their offerings, it wasn't a matter of, oh, okay, because an animal animals are better than plants, that's why uh, Abel's offering was accepted. No, it wasn't a matter of that. It was a matter of the heart. People look judge on the outward appearance, but God, he, he, he judges the heart. That's what he was after. That's what he's always been after since the beginning. That's what he's been pursuing since the beginning. And he wanted to care for that, because if we weren't careful and we listened to the wrong voice, we could be swayed, and that could be our destruction. And we'll go further into that. Um, talk more about that. But in our first point here, our first point, who you worship in the dark will shine forth in the light. Who you worship when nobody's looking at you, it'll shine forth, it'll come forth. Whatever part of your heart maybe you don't allow God to have and, and you hold on to it and, and you're not worshiping it, God with your heart, it's going to come forth. All those things inside your heart, they're going to come forth. 
the things that God allows to be brought up, He's gonna, He allows us to be, go through things and be tested to show what's on the inside. Because He cares about that. Not because He's trying to condemn us. Not because He's trying to hurt us. And I think that's what the world's seeing. The world is seeing the weaknesses of man. The fall of man. We're seeing the darkness that man has. But God, He's trying to reveal His heart through it. He's trying to reveal some hope through it. That He's the hope. That He's the answer. Abel's offering was accepted due to his faith. Hebrews talks about the only thing that pleases God is faith. It's trust. It's your belief in Him. It can't be just merely a thought, though. It's got to be put into action. you got to take steps. And sometimes it'll be tested. Cain thought because his gift wasn't accepted that he wasn't accepted. And like I said, this offering wasn't a test of God's love and acceptance for Cain. Enable. This offering revealed both of the men's hearts. You see, one who was for God's kingdom, who shared his thankfulness and brought the best to God, because God deserves our best, and then some, and it's not even enough then. Amen? But the offering revealed Cain could not accept being second. I'm the first brother. I should become above my brother. I'm not going to be any less or lower than my brother. He had the mindset, I'm number one. God's like, mm -mm, you ain't number one. You try doing that. That's exactly what happened to Satan. I'm trying to help you out here, Cain. That's exactly how Satan fell. He said, I'm number one. I want to be God. When you, when you say that you're number one and you have a power trip, that's, that's a dangerous place to be. When we have that mindset, and it's so easy to get there. It's so easy when you get position and power. It's so easy to think that we're number one. And Cain did that. And so this is important that we see this too. God turned his face from accepting Cain's offering, but he didn't turn his face or lose sight of Cain. This is how you know that God didn't, it wasn't about God's love for Cain and Abel. He loved them. He loved them so much. He, was gonna, he wanted to come alongside as a good father to walk them through it. And so my question to you, in light of our point here, who you worship in the dark will shine forth in the light. My question to you is, who are you choosing to listen, believe, and worship in your life? And if you're trying to hide it, it's going to come forward. That's the truth. And you don't have to be afraid of God. He's not afraid of all the things that are going on inside you. He delights to walk by, beside you. Hey, yeah, that kind of rhymed. <laughs> Oh, it's a little bit of spoken word. I got a, a gift that I didn't know about. I'm just kidding. I kind of joke around with Lizzie about that. Uh, no, sometimes it's bad. But sometimes it's good. Anyways, let's go to our next point here. Number two. Uh, be angry, but don't give an opportunity to the devil. In verses six through eight, we see that. God, God doesn't... Res Cain is angry. He is frustrated because... Because he felt rejected. He didn't feel accepted. Okay, he was jealous. He had to be number one. But God didn't turn to him and say, Cain, stop being angry. Your feelings, your emotions, everything that you're going through is not valid. It's not real. And we can't respond that way to the way that we respond to the world and everything that, the, everybody, that everybody's going through. We can't respond that way to people. We have to create a safe place for people. I think growing up, that's all I wanted. I think that's all what people want. They want a safe place where they can be themselves, even if it's not the most prettiest part of themselves. And know at the end of the day that they'll be accepted. God didn't look at Cain and stop and, and, and tell him to stop being angry. He said, and share his voice and thoughts, feelings, or emotions. God as a good father reached out to Cain. Kept reaching out to him and asked him, what's wrong, Cain? What's the matter? Why are you frustrated? Why are you mad? Scripture tells us to be angry. But it says also, as a warning, don't give an opportunity to the devil. Because if you hold on to it, if you don't voice it, or if you do voice it, but in a healthy way, it can turn into something that's destructive. So it's important to voice our frustration, but there's a healthy way to do it. And this might step on toes a little bit, but social media probably isn't the way to go. Amen. Okay? I'm not doing that to condemn some people maybe who've done that, okay? I'm just trying to help redirect. You can allow God to speak to you there. God's a good way to go. In our text, we can see God is the one to turn to. 
But in our text, God is an authority figure over Cain. And so you will have authority figures that God places in your life, leaders. Pastor Brent is a great leader who accepts my frustration. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like I'm attacking him, but <laughs> my words. And I'm glad that him and Amy accept me for who I am. That I have frustration that I don't have the prettiest car all the time. I'm not the most holiest, okay? I have things that I'm working through too, but they accept me. And they help me to walk through this, especially with everything that was going on with COVID-19. I had no idea. I'm still a young pastor, barely know, don't know how to do my job. So I'm just trying to walk through this and all these built-up emotions and then getting married, being married for three months now, praise, or not three months, <laughs> three weeks. It feels like three months. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> I didn't mean that in a negative way. <laughs> but I'm glad you can laugh about it. <laughs> To ease the mood a little bit, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, Lizzie, I hope you don't hate me after this. Okay, let's get talk. <laughs> Hopefully she's not frustrated with me after this. <laughs> anyway, Cain's face had turned from the face of God. You see that because he, there's no response in verse. And in, in, when, when, when God asks him, why are you angry? And why is your face downcast? In the Greek, if you study, or in the Hebrew, if you study that, his face literally turned from the face of God. And this hadn't happened in this moment. This had happened prior, way prior. It doesn't have scripture. There's no scripture or recollection of his childhood. But this started when he was young. This started when he was young, and he allowed it to grow up into this point. Okay, It starts small, and it starts to grow. Grow and grow and grow. And then when there is a moment where you're tested, it'll, that test will show you who you worship. We are tested to see who we worship, who is the king of our heart. But God still tries to reach out to us, even when we don't worship him. And we see this here. God tries to reach out to his son, Cain, to reveal his love and mercy. He didn't want to control Cain, but he warned him this. He said, now that his face had turned, he said, sin's crouching at your door, Cain. It's about to overtake you. And sin is a powerful force. You see that in Adam and Eve's lives. We were supposed to have a perfect relationship with God, and the only way that that was going to happen was perfect obedience. Man was never able to accomplish that. You're seeing that today in America. America is not able to provide that complete, that that do that completely because man, we're not able to do that. And so you're not seeing the complete freedom that each of us are desiring because it's not found in man; it's found in our relationship with Christ. And if we're not careful, sin is crouching at each of our doors. In our weakness, and is trying to devour us, trying to take over us and rule over us. It's a powerful force. It's a violent demon looking to lead you and influence your life. And in this scripture, we're seeing one who builds God's kingdom, one who builds the enemy's kingdom, if you allow it. And so it's important to examine who are you listening to in every area of your life. Because if you are listening just to the enemy in one area, that's a foothold. And over time, if you don't deal with that, it becomes a stronghold. And then you're like, man, I can't get out of this. You're right. Jesus is the only one that can set you free of that. And if that's you today, God's going to set you free. Amen? God's desire for his son, Cain, wasn't to allow him to be led to destruction, division, and violence, and hate, and evil. That's all you're seeing in this world. Every, Like I said, if you're not a Christ follower, you're going to believe and worship something, and it's going to come out inside of you. We're going to reflect the very father or king that we worship. You are going to either going to be the father of our God and true Savior who saves us, and we will try to reach for peace, for healing, for restoration or, or reconciliation, or you're going to side with the father of all lies, who, who his goal, his mission every single day, still kill and destroy. Violence. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to lie. And you see this in Cain's life, that you know who he was listening to, because he wasn't listening to God, and his life shows it. This led to Cain building the foundation of, of another kingdom other than God's. And that's a scary place to be. But God is still merciful and he will still forgive. And you see this here. Cain calls his brother Abel out to the fields. He doesn't respond to God's mercy and God's warning. Because he was still number one. He was listening to the wrong voice, that fear, that those lies. Tell him, you're not good enough, Cain. You'll never be good enough. And God doesn't accept you. God doesn't care about you. You can imagine all those things that were going on in Cain's life, in Cain's mind. But that wasn't God's desire. His desire 
was to rule over sin, to resist and overcome. But it wasn't at the command of man's voice. It wasn't at the command of man's strength. It was at the command of God's word. He said, you must rule over it, King. You must rule over it. It came from the divine authority from above. We want to be the hero, but we never could. God is the hero. He deserves our praise and our worship. Cain choose, chose his course. We see that in scripture here. Not a godly life, but an ungodly life. Each of us have that same choice. He ends up killing his brother. And if we don't deal with anger in our hearts in a healthy way, anger leads to bitterness, bitterness leads to resentment, and it leads to hate, and then hate leads to murder, violence. And that's all we're seeing here. I'm not here to condemn. I'm just here to make us aware of the voice that we're choosing to believe. And justice started at the beginning, and it wasn't people who, who, who started. No, it was an enemy, Satan, who came to steal, kill, and destroy all of our lives. That's the real enemy. I'm not saying your frustration is valid. I'm not saying those aren't real. But God wants to walk you through those. And time and time again, God tried to reveal his mercy and love to Cain, but he wouldn't receive it. I don't believe it. Sin hardened his heart and made him blind. To sing God's love. God who knows everything meets Cain after killing his brother. This is interesting how he meets him in such a way. Okay? Because after killing a man, man, you would think that the, okay, he deserves a death sentence now. God who knows and it knows everything meets Cain in a way, not in a condemning way. But he asks what he already knows. He says, Cain, where's your brother? He doesn't say, Cain, you messed up. You're a murderer. You're evil. He doesn't come down hard and condemn. He gives him a chance to turn. He can turn your eyes. Come on, King. Don't go that way. And just like in, 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 in the New Testament, it says if we confess and forsake our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. God wanted to save Cain. But he wasn't going to force him. He wasn't going to control him. He was going to give him a chance to, to see his mercy, to respond to his mercy. Cain didn't. He allowed something else in his head to lead him. Now it's fear. He allowed the wrong father to lead him. And we know this to be true because we, we see how he, he responds. He was reflecting the characteristics of his father. The father of all lies. He just committed a murder and he turns to God and says, I don't know where my brother is. Why are you asking me? I'm not my brother's keeper. You see that he has positioned himself in alignment. John talks about it in the New Testament, that he is a murderer and a child of the devil. And if we're not careful, we can align ourselves under the same path. That's why it's important that we listen to the right voice, that still, small voice. Fear is going to be yelling at you every single day, but we need to listen to that still, small voice. And we can say to that fear, fear go, Holy Spirit come. Every part of your life. God's the one who's going to show you love. We do things out of fear or we do things out of love. But that didn't stop God from pursuing him. Cain went from, like I said, murder to now lying. And it brings me to my next point here. Don't harden your heart, but receive God's mercy. Sin will have a tendency of doing that, hardening your heart and not receiving God's mercy. There were consequences to Cain's actions his vocation of taking care of the plants would be taken from him. And God said, now you're going to be a fugitive and a wanderer in the earth. And, and Cain, he didn't, he didn't soften his heart and say, oh man, I, I messed up. Instead, he, he put his folk, he hardened his heart, and he, he, he complained about the consequences. Instead of breaking down in guilt and humbling himself before God, he broke down under his punishment and removed himself from God. Cain didn't receive God's mercy, and it led him to this place. And this is a scary thing, because this is we're all susceptible to this. A place called Nod, away from the presence of God. And it's a place of wandering and unrest. And the only things that dwell in a place of unrest and wandering are demons. And you see that because Cain's family line, they would just get evil and evil and evil, and they wouldn't build God's kingdom. But the enemy's kingdom. It wouldn't stop there. 
I know it's kind of depressing in the story. You're like, man, this is kind of not really encouraging, Andy. It's not over yet. Don't worry. There's still, there's still a hero that comes to save. Evil will continue to spread and multiply throughout Cain's life and his family line. Abel would be gone. You can imagine Eve's like, God, I thought you, I thought you were going to bring freedom. I thought I mean, my son Abel's dead. Cain's living. I, I thought we were going to get freedom over the serpent. People would begin to build cities, play instruments, keep animals, and work with metals. But nonetheless, sin would grow alongside these achievements. And that's because who they chose to listen, believe, and worship. Cain would continue to have the mindset of being number one because he even named the city. He didn't name the city after God. He named the city after his own son. And like I said, you can imagine Eve just thinking, I'm not seeing this, this my offspring bruising the serpent. I'm seeing the same mistake that we made. I'm, I just witnessed an injustice of my son being murdered for he didn't do any wrong. She didn't see that freedom. And how true is that today? Like some of us feel, we don't see that freedom in our world. And how, man, what a time like this that we need it. Where is this freedom in the midst of our suffering? Freedom, I'll, I'll be honest with you, freedom won't truly be found on this earth or in America or in this government. But it will be found in, in, in the only true king you choose to listen, believe, and worship. This wasn't the end of the story. You see Cain's family line continue to be wicked and do evil things. But if you go all the way down to 25 to 26 and you read it further, you would see this. Adam and Eve knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said, she hath appointed me another, another seed instead of Abel, who came slew. And to Seth, to him also there was, was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then, became, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. And so the story wasn't over there yet. Cain's family line, yeah, he wouldn't necessarily follow God or build his kingdom, but then you see Enos, who was born through Seth. He begins to call upon the name of the Lord. He begins to build God's kingdom, to pioneer And so you begin to see a little bit of hope of like, oh, okay, my son's, he's doing what you what you called him to do. There's, there, we're starting to see freedom. We're starting to see uh, worshiping of the one true king. Okay, we're seeing this. Okay, we're seeing that. But then you're also seeing this. If you read past this, you see Enoch, Cain's son. You see redemption happen because Enoch, even though e evil increases, you see Enoch is the only one that walks with God. And so the point I want to key in on this is that God is faithful to fulfilling his promise. Enos was the beginning starting point of calling upon the name of the Lord. But then he, he wasn't done with Cain and his family line. He redeemed what the enemy stole. And Enoch began to follow the Lord too. And so my, my point is that God is faithful to fulfilling his promise. And if you have read through scripture, you see time and time again, God is trying to reach out and reveal his mercy, not his judgment. And he would further in this big God story, that's what we call it on Wednesday nights, big God story. Um, he would send his son, Jesus, who would, like I said in scripture before, he would bruise the serpent or be bruised by the serpent and die an unjust death. But we raised back to life to defeat Satan, to send uh, Defeat Satan, sin, and death in order to save the human race and all those who believe. And to tear down every stronghold, every high place that was not of his kingdom. To destroy the works of the devil. God is faithful in fulfilling his promise. It doesn't always come the way that we imagined it. But he's there in the process to help us walk through it. And so my question is to you. Who's the king of your heart? And whose kingdom are you building? Because... It'll be that will determine the life that you live. It'll lead to one will lead to resentment, to violence, to hate, to uh, bitterness, to murder, to the destruction of your life. And one will lead to peace, restoration, healing, reconciliation, freedom, 
And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, because it won't be easy. But it's worth it. And in the story, we learn our, our four factors that play into following the king, or the one two, two king, we will listen, believe, and worship. These are four, four ca- key factors that we have to hold on to when, when, when we're worshiping the true king. Is who you worship in the dark will shine forth in the light. It's not a matter of you showing everyone, hey, I worship like this. Pharisees did that for attention, for approval of man. God sees you. He sees what you're going through. It's not going to be like that forever. Keep worshiping. Keep pressing. We have to be tested to see who we worship. We have to go through things. But he's going to be there with us. We're going to get frustrated, but don't give an opportunity to the devil. Don't give him a foothold. Don't give him a stronghold. If he has a stronghold, God's going to break them in Jesus' name. Don't harden your heart, but receive God's mercy. And know this, God's faithful in fulfilling his promise. So we're going to have the musicians come at this time. Maybe you've never heard the story of Jesus and what he did for us on the cross, and this is the first time you've been tuning in, and you don't know who the king of your heart is. The choice is simple. God's way or an ungodly way. God's not going to control us. He's not going to control our options. But he gives us a choice. And he gives us a voice. And that voice, it starts at recognizing, I messed up, God. I'm a sinner. I need your love. I need your grace. I can't ever do this right on my own. I need your help. It's recognizing that we're messed up and we need him. If that's you today, you want to make Jesus your king of your heart and of your life, I want to pray with you. And so if all of us can bow our heads and pray. So God, we just thank you that you're a good God, that you're faithful, that you every single day try to reach out to us and reveal your love and your purpose and your plan. Even when we are hard in our hearts and we turn from you, God, and we're frustrated, you are still faithful. You don't allow anything to get in the way of pursuing us. There is no height, no depth, no past, no pain that will ever separate us from your love for us, God. You will continue to pursue us. God, I pray that you would open our eyes and help us to see your love. God, we recognize that we are all sinners and that we all fall short. We need your grace, your mercy. God, we surrender our lives right now. And we declare that you are king. And we will build your kingdom forevermore. God, we thank you. Jesus' name. I want to pray for you if maybe there's something, maybe there's a point here that stood out to you. But before I do that, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna go to, uh, to worship and allow God to speak to you guys before we go over that. So if you want to stand wherever you're at, at home, if you want to stand here, we're gonna go ahead and worship God and allow God to minister to you on those four points. For so long. I know what it feels like to be crippled by fear and paralyzed by fear, and you never think you'll get free of it. And just like Denise said in the night, God, God is holding on to you. In the darkest of your night, He's holding on to you. He's not letting go. And he won't let go of you. He's going to see you through it. Just open your heart and receive His love. Before we go, I want to pray these four points over each of us that God would help us to worship only one true king. Hmm. And so if everybody can bow your heads and close your eyes. God, we just thank you. God, we repent right now for believing anything else other than you. For believing fear, for aligning ourselves along with the wrong father, the father of all lies. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us for believing those things and thinking that's what defines us. God, that is, those things don't define us anymore. Your word is what defines us. Sin does not define us anymore. God, because you sent your son. You sent your son to Cain to bring us liberty and to set us free into every area of our lives. God, so we surrender. We bring our hearts before you. Help us to hear you. Help us to believe and to worship you, Father. When nobody is looking at us, when we're, when we're going through a test and we're worshiping you, God, help us to worship when nobody's looking. 
Help us to continue to press in and press on and press through. God, allow, God, the, the dark parts of our lives, God, the, to be the ashes of our lives to be changed for beauty. God, what the enemy meant for evil in our lives, God, would you turn it around and use it for good? Would we shine forth with your truth and building your kingdom? And even along the way, when we're angry, God, I pray that you would show us that you're still so close as a good father that we would not give an opportunity to the devil. We would draw near to you, that we would resist the devil. We would express our frustration, but try to hear your heartbeat. God, I pray that sin wouldn't harden our heart. God, I pray our hearts would be softened right now by your love. God, it's your love, it's your mercy, God, that changes us. And it's going to be your mercy, God, that heals us. It's going to be your mercy that heals everybody in their hurts that they're going through. It's always you, Jesus. It will always be you, and it will never stop being you. Hallelujah. And I thank you that you have sent us your Holy Spirit to all who received it. You sealed us with your spirit, and you are faithful in fulfilling your promise that it won't come by man's strength, but it will become by your spirit, Lord. That the good work that you began in each of us, that you will bring it to completion by your grace and by your spirit. Would you help us to worship the one true king? And that's you, Jesus. Every knee and every bow, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. We praise you, Lord. God, I pray that you would be with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks for allowing me to share the message with you. I hope each of you guys are doing well. Um, it's good to see you guys in person. And I hope you guys have a blessed week. Stay safe out there and continue to shine God's, God's light. Amen. Hey, thanks, Pastor Andy. Let's give him a hand. Good word in the age that we live in. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Facebook and joining us here. Next week we will be back here. It is 4th of July weekend. So if you are in, in house here in town, we invite you to come back and be here. Um, I believe Creed is one of the few places that is having a fireworks um, demonstration on Saturday evening, I believe. It will be either Friday or Saturday. It's the third? Okay. And uh, it's one of the things you can go take your lawn chair, social distance, and still take it in. So it's usually a good half an hour for show. So uh, it's worth making the effort to get here. So, hey, God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Have a great week. And we'll talk to you later. God bless.